Now, this is an interesting bill too. Um, that's just been passed through, which is well, it's it's the well, it's 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 before the house. It's the Protection of Journalist Source Bill. Uh, is one bound to be very close to the heart of our and our staff. Uh, journalists do not like to give it the secret sources when they offer those sources protections. It's about keeping everyone's honest and ensuring those whistleblowers don't get everything blown back in their faces. As the bill itself notes, journalists rely on source protection to gather and reveal information in the public interest from confidential sources. Such as sources may require non anonymity to protect them from physical, economic, or professional reprisals in response to revel re their revelations. Um, it's a member's bill supported by Louise Walls and, and aims to clarify some bits of the law that were a bit vague uh, that led to police searches of Nicky Hager's home and the property over his dirty politics books. The search was later ruled unlawful and police eventually apologised to Hager and paid compensation. Um, the book also recognises the fact that investigative journalists and people writing books are journalists and that they are actually protected by those laws. The, 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 the bit that actually bugs me about this law, the bit that bugs me about this law, and, and the usual people, Simon Bridges and Anxious, sort of, you know, going, well, who classifies as a journalist? I mean, the reality is anybody that turns around and picks up a pen, in my opinion, is a journalist. That's it. That's, that's what it is. You know, everyone, there seems to be this problem with government about the idea of public actually having power to express themselves. It seems to be the trend at the moment that, oh no, people are too, too, too stupid. Trust in us, the, the lawyer, the politicians. Like, yeah, right. Gonna do that, buddy. Um, but what I'm more concerned about, however, what I think was missing in this particular bill is that as I've said previously beforehand, like, you know, when it comes down to funding and as we get into the economically tighter, it's, it's becoming harder and harder to be an independent journalist. I've just had, because of COVID, literally had my entire business wiped out. Um, I'm actually having to be on the sickness benefit at the moment because of, you know, uh, uh, and it sucks because I fucking don't like being in. I don't like having the government having strings over my head. Um, and now I have to turn around and kind of like put my put my life together again, forget how to get things funding again. It's really, really, really hard because if I go to the left, there's money to be had if I suck their tit. And there's money to be had if you go to the right and you suck their tit. But if you're an independent journalist, there's absolutely no money there whatsoever at all. Um, and and it's making things really, really, really hard. And what I what I don't like about the idea of bills that protect journalists from sources is that if a journalist is actually allied with a political party, which, you know, I'm, whether you want to point whale oil with his links to the National Party, or you want to put Nicky Yeager with his, you know, very, very strong links to the Greens and the Labour Party, I'm, I'm concerned that then what actually becomes is that you've got a, basically a propagandist having the protections of journalism so that they can protect their sources which can actually be politicians seeking to do quite mischievous things to actually hammer out, uh, hammer their you know their opponents into the ground. Um, I don't think that's what the protection of journalism actually is all about. So I think what really needs to also be brought into question is about this 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 really unholy situation which become like accepted as normal that journalists are somehow like expected to become like take a partisan position. I really, really see that and I find that I've been struggling because I find, you know, for my entire life, but it's got worse, I, you know, I, I, I cover issues and I, I like to think I actually have my wider country's interests at heart and that I'm really motivated by this and I'm not out here for money and I'm not out here this, this for fame. But what I find, as I say, is that if I, if I, if I take that line, the funding becomes very, very, very difficult because actually getting people to actually or to fund something that's really essential for them and making them realise how important to do that is difficult. It's a lot easier to turn around and say, I'm I'm telling you what you want to hear and then money just it said, like, drops in like out of nowhere. I, I just I just struggling with this particular particular cause um, because I think that is the whole issue, one of the things that we need to be talking about amongst journalists ourselves and which... The, the public need to be start to be asking this question is about what, what is what is the expectations of the public that their media comes to them as actually independent that it's not funded by one group or the other that protections aren't offered by one group or the other or that the law is not used by one or the other to actually use journalists to actually further political aims i mean in terms of dirty politics we've gone so far down the, the rabbit hole it's not funny but i think i think that's a basic point there as i'm just saying there is that 
I like the Bill and Principle. It's it's probably, you know, like when it was um, David Fisher versus Kim Dotcom. David Fisher? It was David Fisher versus The Crown, but it was on when David Fisher wrote his book about Kim.com, and the judge at that point turned around and said, oh, well, I don't recognise books as being a form of journalism. I mean, it, it also gets, this actually is actually, I guess, really, really the real issue that, it, that's going on here is that um, it's not really the judge's place to decide what journalism actually is or is not. That's that's what journalists do. We, we police ourselves. Um, obviously, new technology changes that situation, but... You know, when we get back to the whole issue about saying books aren't journalism, well, I'm pretty sure that's why there's a section, you know, why it is journalism, because there's a section on Pulitzer Awards, which anybody, you know, unless you live in a cave, knows what a Pulitzer is, for actually best authors, you know, and, and that's for investigative journalism. So if the world's leading authority on from from a, from a professional journalism can actually say, well, actually, we recognise, that should be suffice. Problem is that legally, what we see more and more is there's a creep, a mission creep going on. Also, that the courts is deciding according like they get to decide what is the true source of information. That's actually, I think, a pretty dangerous position to occur. And um, probably next, you know, next to the idea that Parliament can tell us what who and who is a journalist. Um, you, know, you know, the idea is that no, you the people decide that. Anyway, so that's my little thought on that little particular clause.